don't forgive me for this trap shit. Sergeant Smack make it backflip. Telly Hank it with the action. With the vital speaking Spanish. Frank Matthews, how I vanish. Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut. Gold BBS is on a beamer. When Fat Cat was tearing queens up. Fall off the profit, not the re up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus. Uptown like I'm Baby Man. Just caught a touchdown. From the yo, yo. We back. It's your boy Papala. Mob ties. We on our way down to Florida with it. Jacksonville. I think it's our first time here. Orange Park. Definitely our first time in Orange Park. So everybody from Jacksonville and Orange Park, y'all get in the comment box. This story here has been a long time coming. We about to try to put some facts behind the myth, the man, the legend. Cover the picture that spoke a million words. Today we're going to be covering none other than the infamous Henry Mann. What the newspaper claims is Jacksonville's first kingpin. Now, straight off of the first indictment, it looks like Mr. Mann's activity started in the game back in 1986. So, according to the authorities from December of 1986 to March of 1988, federal and local authorities conducted a major investigation of a crack cocaine distribution ring operating in Jacksonville, Florida, and in nearby Orange Park, Florida. The investigation culminated in an indictment of 20 people, including seven key key figures, but we're going to hone in on who authority said was the head or the kingpin of the conspiracy, and that's going to be Henry Mann. Now, the indictment alleged that two principals in a drug trafficking conspiracy were defendants Henry L. Mann and his brother Emmett Mann. The indictment also alleges that a guy by the name of Michael L. Keeley served as the right-hand man to the organization. Another gentleman by the name of Richard Nixon was named in an indictment, and they say he pretty much operated the stash houses where a majority of the crack cocaine was distributed to his street dealers. All four of those defendants were charged and convicted of other counts, but mainly conspiracy to distribute cocaine and cocaine base and the more serious charge of engaging in a continuing criminal enterprise or that CCE 448. The government also alleged that Henry Mann and his brother's operation obtained some cocaine from another defendant by the name of Gerald Wells. A defendant by the name of Michael Parks was hired to transport the cocaine powder to Jacksonville, where it was ultimately processed into cocaine base or crack. They also alleged that the father of Richard Nixon lived in Ephraim County, Georgia, and was one of a number of contractors who purchased for resale various amount of cocaine from the organization. Wells, Parks, and Nixon were all charged and convicted of participating in a drug trafficking conspiracy. Almost 10 months after the government initiated its investigation of the alleged conspiracy, law enforcement officials applied for an order authorizing a wiretap of the telephone located in the Orange Park residence of Michael Keeley and Richard Nixon. They also wiretapped Richard Mann's stash house at that same time. So those were the details of his 1988 arrest, I want to say. Now, authorities say while out on supervised release for the prior drug convictions, Henry Mann committed another controlled substance offense when he attempted to purchase half a kilogram of cocaine. A grand jury indicted Henry Mann on one count of attempting to possess with the intent to distribute 500 or more grams of cocaine. So the government deemed, based on his prior conviction of more than 40 felony offenses in the 1988 case, which involved the takedown of one of Jacksonville's most significant crack cocaine operations, the prior felony drug convictions had the effect of increasing Henry Mann's mandatory minimum prison sentence from five years to 10 years, and the maximum sentence rose from 40 years to life. Now, I'm going to try to go into some details of his 
most recent arrest, which happened in 2010, which I want to say has some levels of entrapment into it. So on November 17, 2010, they say Henry Mann met up with a female undercover officer and an undercover DEA agent at a McDonald's restaurant in Lake City, Florida. The DEA agent, who was equipped with a recording device, was posing as a Mexican supplier capable of supplying kilogram quantities of cocaine. The agent told Henry Mann that he sold bricks of high purity cocaine by the kilogram. According to the government, Henry Mann told the agent he would like to start purchasing one kilogram of cocaine and afterwards he wished to increase the number of kilograms he received. The negotiated price for the kilograms between the two was 26000 The agent went on to tell Henry Mann it would take about two weeks to deliver the cocaine because he was awaiting the shipment from the border. The DEA agent told him that they could meet again on December 5th or 6th of 2010. The government also said that Henry Mann discussed purchasing seedless marijuana from the agent as well, but no marijuana transaction would come into fruition. Now, on December 5th of 2010, the female undercover officer had a series of controlled telephone calls with Henry Mann where Henry Mann informed the officer that he could only get half of the money together and therefore he wanted to know if he could still purchase half of a kilogram of cocaine. The officer told Henry Mann that although the the supplier, who was the undercover DEA agent, typically did not sell half of kilogram quantities, he was willing to meet with Henry Mann and would consider doing that. They said Henry Mann offered to bring some car titles as collateral in case the cocaine source was willing to give him more cocaine for those car titles. Now, on December 6, 2010 is when the shit all went down. They said Henry Mann met up again with the two officers in Lake City, Florida. They say the meeting was captured on an audio video recording device. Henry Mann arrived with a total of $13,100, of which $10,600 was contained in an envelope while the remaining 2500 was in his pocket. They say Henry Mann approached the undercover vehicle and tossed the envelope into the center console. At that time, the DEA agent contact contacted another DEA task force officer in the area who was driving an undercover trap car containing two kilograms of cocaine in the trunk. The task force officer drove her vehicle to the meeting site and showed Henry Mann the two kilograms of cocaine. The undercover agent then told Henry Mann that since he brought half the money, the agent would cut one of the kilograms in half and return it to him. Henry Mann then agreed. At that point, the undercover D agent gave the bus signal and Henry Mann was then apprehended. Um, and that's where they're going to go in. And it looks like they went to trial. And after a lengthy trial, I want to say he pled out to 15 or was sentenced to 15. I'm not sure what the circumstances was on it, but I see that they was looking at trying to give him 40 to life. So, however, uh, if he had a lawyer that worked out that day, however, man, we want to see Henry man at home. Now, what I really need y'all to do is get in the comment box and y'all let me know, man. Does this sound like an entrapment case? How they just know to find him and offer him kilogram quantities of cocaine after he just came home? Um, yeah, this should just seem fishy. But y'all know we're going to be back with more of this real trill spill. It's your boy Pop a lot, man. Shout out to old Jacksonville, man. It's the mob. Mob, 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 ties.